Hello, this is the solution to problem number 14, chapter 4 in your Zellman book, Louisville Community Hospital. Just some things as you're looking over the statement of operations and the balance sheet that I would like you to think about or, or as you're looking at this, what you should be looking at. So one of the first things, if you look at zero, year zero versus year one, we notice that the operating revenues has increased significantly from 19,800 or 19,800,000 to 24 million. So that's great, right? Big increase in revenue. Also, when you look at the, le the expenses, we see that the expenses went up significantly from 17.1 to 22.7. And then when we look at the excess of revenue over expenses, it's just a modest increase. So what that tells us off the bat is that, yes, they made a little bit more money, their revenues are up, but their operating expenses or expenses were up as well. Looking then at the balance sheet, we notice that there's a big increase in board designated funds. And as we go through the ratios, we can um, see how that affects things a little bit more. And what are board designated funds? So those are really investments. Okay, so I'm not going to walk through every number from the um, solution here. I will post this as a separate uh, Excel document so you can review it. But what I really want to do is go over each of the sections and what it means. So the first ratio is the current ratio. And here, we're taking the current assets versus, oh, divided by the current liabilities. And what does this tell us? So this tells us how likely they are to be able to pay off their current liabilities. And so here, you can see the benchmark is 2.04. So that means you want to have a little more than twice current assets versus current liabilities. And as we look at in year, this is year zero, right? And year one, let's make that a little bigger. We can see in year zero, they had almost at the benchmark. And year one, they were under the benchmark. So the terms that we want to use are whether it's favorable or unfavorable to the benchmark. So here in year zero, I would say that Louisville Community Hospital is below the benchmark in year zero as it relates to the current ratio and trending unfavorable as they are at 1.66 in year one. So this would give us a little bit of a concern that will they be able to pay their current liabilities. When we look at the calculation here, we can see that the numerator, right? So if you flip to page 192, you can see the current assets are 5650 in year one. And in the prior year, they were 5250. Uh, and the current liabilities increased from 2750 or 2750000 to $3.4 million. And so we would say that this is unfavorable. Next, you can see we have the quick ratio, which is similar to the current ratio except it only looks at cash marketable securities and net receivables divided by our current liabilities. Um, here again, you can see that we are here in year zero above the benchmark. And here we are below just slightly. So we would say we are in year zero. We are a little over the benchmark. So that is good. And in year one, we've trended unfavorably, and we are about at the benchmark. So 
if I were to say to you, is this company doing good or poorly, looking at one benchmark, you should not make a, a judgment. You, these are all clues that will have you ask additional questions. We're going to skip now to the days and accounts receivable. And remember, if you look at page 185 and 186, it tells you exactly whether you want the desired position to be above or below. So you shouldn't have to guess on that. So days and accounts receivable. Here our benchmark is 45 and we are at 67 and then 63. So here we are greatly above the benchmark, right? So we are trending or we are unfavorable to the benchmark and while we're trending a little better, we're still not at all near the benchmark of 45 and we want to be below that. Remember the whole concept of days and accounts receivable, why that's such an important key performance indicator, is that we want to understand how the entity is able to convert its accounts receivable, money that's due from others, so here due from insurance companies primarily, into cash. And why do they need cash? Well, they need cash to pay their bills, to pay the salaries, and so forth. So that's days and accounts receivable. OK, so now we're going to talk about days cash on hand. And here we can see that the entity has, 80, uh, has 230 days cash on hand in year 0 and 338 days cash on hand in year, zero, in year 1. The benchmark is 81 days. So the question is, are they doing well to the benchmark or good, better than the benchmark or worse than the benchmark? So said another way, would you rather have 230 days cash in your bank account or 81 days? So I hope you all would say 230. So here, I think it's really clear that they are doing much better than the benchmark. You can look at the solution and see what the uh, how we calculate that, and I do want to bring to your attention a couple of things. So the calculation is cash plus marketable securities plus long-term investments, or in this case, board-designated funds. So this is an important item for you to note, that on many of nonprofit entities' balance sheets, you will see a line item board-designated funds. Those are investments. And so you need to add those in in doing your calculation for days cash on hand. And then the denominator is operating expenses minus depreciation divided by 365. And remember, we went over in class how you need to do that calculation using PEMDAS, right? Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, so forth. OK. so. Um, Next, we have our average payment period, and this is our current liabilities divided by operating expenses minus depreciation divided by 365. This tells us, on average, how long does it take us to pay our bills. So if you were a vendor of Louisville, and the benchmark is 51 days, and they take 61 days to pay you, would you be happy or not so happy? So I probably wouldn't be so happy to have to wait two months to get paid. So here again, if we were to describe this, we would say that as compared to the benchmark of 51, Louisville is unfavorable. And again, if you flip to your uh, financial ratio sheet um, and look at that, it would say you want to be below. And so here they are above at 66, and they are trending favorably. Right, they're 61, but still 10 days over. So that's our liquidity. So when we look at the liquidity overall, I would say that they have a little bit of a challenge with their liquidity. They aren't doing well with their accounts receivable, their quick ratio, they're trending unfavorably. And so I would have a little bit of concern in terms of how they can pay their current operations, for, pay their current liabilities and so forth for the next period. Um, but what we need to do is continue on to understand the whole picture. So the next section we're going to look at 
uh, is um, some key performance indicators based on some of their uh, data. So here we're going to take the operating revenue per adjusted discharge. So some of you may not be familiar with the term discharge in this context. And so we all know if someone's going into the hospital, they have to come out of the hospital. When you go into the hospital and you're staying overnight, you're admitted. And when you leave the hospital, you are discharged. So hospitals count admissions as well as discharges. And here what we're looking at is our operating revenue divided by the total number of discharges. So uh, if we look at our operating revenue, right, if we look at page 191, our total operating revenue is 24 million, which increased from 19.8 million. And our adjusted discharges here tells us from the problem on page 193 that we had 3100 for 2000 and 3300 for 2001. So here we look at the benchmark is $6,407 of revenue per discharge and our um, calculation is 6387 and then 7273. So think about it, would you rather have uh, revenue per an item lower or higher. So most of us would want it to be higher, right? So here we are favorable to the discharge in 2000, to the benchmark in 2001, um, unfavorable in 2000, zero. So we are trending favorably. Now in terms of the expenses, right? So we have expenses of a benchmark of 6,112 and here in year zero, we are way below at 5516. But look at what happened in 2001, 6879. So we have trended unfavorably in that our expenses increased dramatically. And we are now unfavorable to the benchmark. The next ratio we look at is salaries and benefits as a percentage of operating expenses. So of our total operating expenses, how much do we pay salaries and benefits. And as we've talked about in class, that oftentimes this is the highest expense or largest expense on our statement of operations. So here you can see that the benchmark is 38% and we're at 53, trending unfavorably to 57. So we're unfavorable to the benchmark, trending unfavorably. The next uh, one is our operating margin. This is a very common thing that we talk about. Our operating margin is X percent. So we talk about it in percentages. So here you can see it says 0.03 is the benchmark, but we wouldn't say we want an operating margin of 0.03. We would say we want an operating margin of 3%. So here in year zero, we had a 14% operating margin and in year one, five percent. So in both years we are favorable, but how did we trend from 14 percent down to five percent? We're trended unfavorable, but we're still above the benchmark. I'm going to skip um, down a little bit because uh, you can go through these in your book uh, to talk about the one that I, another one that I think is important, which is our age of plant ratio. And this really tells us how old is our plant, how old is our equipment. If you were going to get um, a procedure done or a uh, radiology test, an MRI, would you want the latest and greatest or would you want an old MRI? So I think most of us would want the latest and greatest. And so the benchmark here is 10 years or 10.12. And Ours is uh, 8.5 and then goes down to 7.2. So here we are favorable to the benchmark and trending favorably. So on average, the age of our plant, age of our items is 7.2 years. Next, we want to look at our debt. How much money do we owe? Do we owe a lot of money compared to um, the benchmark? And so here, we're going to look at the long-term 
uh, debt to net assets ratio, and here we want to be below the ratio. So here you can see we are way above, so we are unfavorable. But then in year one, we become favorable to the benchmark. So there's just some um, items for you to consider. Now, in answering the questions that are asked in the example, right, it wants us to tell us, comment on their liquidity, efficient use of assets, revenue, expense, and profitability capital structure. So let's, let's go over that. So here, in terms of liquidity, Louisville's numbers indicate possible problems with liquidity. As we talked about, both the current and quick ratios indicate they may have difficulty covering their short-term liabilities. Um, but we do know that they have plenty of cash on hand. And so these are contradictory and um, part of it stems from the major investment by a con by a, a philanthropist. So that we found out if you look again at the balance sheet we talked about that that really is due to the increase in board designated funds. Um, I think as they say here it's important to note that accounts receivable decline slightly but still they are not converting their receivables to cash anywhere near the benchmark and although they're paying their bills a little bit more quickly, they are still below or unfavorable to the benchmark. Um, looking at their revenue expenses and profitability, here the operating margin um, have all declined, but you know remember the op the operating margin was above the benchmark, and that's really probably due to their increased expenses. Um, and so uh, that's what we saw in terms of revenue and expenses. Under activity, um, here it says the Louisville activity ratios indicate mixed results. The total asset turnover ratio has declined slightly, um, but I think here they have a decreased age of plant ratio, which is below the benchmark. And so what this tells us is that they are replacing their fixed assets with newer plant and equipment. Under capital structure, we saw that um, they really became favorable in terms of the long-term debt to net assets ratio. And so they would have ability potentially to borrow money. So the summary here is really that Louisville needs to control its operating expenses, right? Their expenses are high and generate higher operating revenues to increase their profits and look, needs to improve their collection of receivables. Um, and I would also add maybe look at their expenses in terms of their salary and benefits because they seem to be way above the benchmark. So I hope this helps and gives you an idea of when you are looking at an entity and doing these ratios, the way you want to approach it, how you want to look at things, and this should help you for your final project.